Okay. So everyone has the abuse, resident abuse, neglect prevention and reporting post test. We are reviewing this today because during our recent survey, the state gave us an immediate jeopardy because we had two residents say that they were not taken care of for 24 hours. So we're gonna review these. I will read the question and then you can give me the answer and then I'll make a comment. I lost my post. Okay. Okay, so number one, what does it mean to say someone was abused? Correct. We always need to make sure residents are treated with kindness, respect, and with compassion to ensure they are receiving the highest quality of care. What does it mean to say someone was neglected? Be all of the above. Correct. We need to assure we are answering call lights. It's all our responsibility to answer call lights. If we go in to answer a call light, do not shut it off unless we are in there meeting their needs at that time, okay? And another um, area I want to discuss is that providing care. So if Sally wants a shower on Thursday, we give Sally, per her preference, her showers on Thursday, not per our preference on Saturdays, okay? Which characteristic of a resident might put them at risk for being abused? Yes, Please. cognitively impaired. When Please. a resident has moderately severe cognitive deficits, if they report abuse, it does not need reported. False. That is false. Irregardless of their cognition, it needs to be reported. So if we had a severely cognitive resident and they brought, made an accusation, we would treat it as if you or I were making that accusation, okay, until investigated. Which of the following is a factor that might make it more likely a caregiver could become abusive or neglect someone in their care? Yes, so not only monitor yourself, monitor your coworkers. You're noticing any burnout, increase in exhaustion, um, anxiety. If they're getting easily frustrated, you know, talk to them or report it to your supervisor if you don't feel comfortable. There are resources in Allison Carey or I or supervisors will help, okay? The Elder Justice Act requires that any suspicion of a crime towards a resident be reported. Who is required to report? All of the above, so yep. So it's your responsibility to immediately report it to your supervisor. Your supervisor's responsibility is to um, immediately report it to Allison Carrier or I, okay? If you fail to report abuse, what can happen? Yes, and your license could be investigated, so. As soon as, soon, how soon should the suspected abuse, neglect, and crime be reported? Yes, do not wait till the end of your shift. Do not write it on paper, immediately report it. Which two agencies are required to be notified of a crime? DMC. Yes, yep. So your responsibility is to report it to your supervisor and then Carrie, Allison, and I will report it to the law enforcement and Lara as necessary, unless it's something immediate and then we'll walk you through how to do the police reporting. If I do not document cares being completed, this could be seen as neglect. True. Yep, if you do not document it, it's not done. If I do not document CARES medications, my license could be reported for neglect to the state of Michigan. That is very true. And number 12 is just a kind of a reminder because it could really be any of us, but the facility abuse coordinator is the administrator. Now I have some examples here that I had taken off the compliance store. They're not mine personally. so. Sally is a Cena for Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith is having a bad day and doesn't want to take a shower. Sally yells at him, tells him he's stupid and has no choice, and then forces him to take a shower. Is this an example of abuse? Yes. Yes, it is. So the resident has the right to um, choose when to take their showers. However, if they have a history of refusing, attempt different approaches, such as having a different staff member approach. If a resident um, or your supervisor approach, I would try different scenarios okay just don't give up on them bernice is a resident and her husband bob comes to visit her every day he is well loved by the staff and is a volunteer at the facility bernice's roommate calls out at times and it aggravates bob one day when bernice's roommate is calling out bob goes over to her bed slaps her face and yells at her to stop is this an example of abuse yes, yes it is Jim, the resident, asked Martha the Cena to help him to the bathroom. Jim has dementia and often forgets when... You do, I'm sorry. So, the next one, I'm sorry. 
purposely isolating a resident alone in their room is a form of abuse. Yeah. True. Okay, now the next one. Jim, the resident, asks Martha the Cena to help him to the bathroom. Jim has dementia and often forgets when he has just used the bathroom. Martha replies, you just went, Jim. Go ahead and pee your pants. I'm not taking you again. Jim becomes really upset and starts pacing and hitting the walls. This is an example of abuse and neglect. Yeah. Yes. Again, try different interventions. Is he bored? Does he need to attend activities? Is he retaining urine? Does the nurse need to do an assessment? Or does he have a UTI? Do we need to monitor him? So just try, just don't say, oh, he just has to go to the bathroom all the time. And that's good. What are some signs that a resident may be experiencing abuse? Yes, and with bruises, scratches, or any new marks, we have to know where they came from. Those have to be immediately reported too if we don't because we not only have to do an incident report, but that could be a reportable. So we have the two hour reporting time frame for those also. Mary, the resident asks for an extra slice of apple pie with lunch. Janet, the dietary aide, yells across the room. You're too fat, Mary, no extra pie for you. Mary is mortified. Is this an example of abuse? Yes. yes. Earl is a resident with cognitive deficits. Recently, he's been going to Gertrude's room at night, getting in her bed and touching her under her nightgown without her consent. Is this abuse, yes. sexual abuse? So just a reminder on our second floor um, to keep your eyes, the doors need to remain shut down the halls. That has been helping. And then we're supervising our residents that like to ambulate around the unit and make sure they're not going in other resident rooms. It's been better. If a resident yells at them and calls them names, it's not abuse because they're married. If a resident's spouse, that's false is correct. Which of the following is consider, considered physical abuse? Yes, and each one of those would have to immediately be reported. So Dawn is a housekeeper. Joan is a resident who lives on that unit who often says funny phrases and makes jokes. One day while Joan is using the bathroom, Dawn records her singing a silly song and posts it on Facebook without her consent or knowledge. Is this an example of mental or physiological abuse? Yes. No staff have permission to post any resident's pictures on social media. Not following a resident's plan of care can be considered abuse and neglect. Yes. yes. Always check your resident's plan of care when you're coming on to see if there's been changes. A lot happens. You completed residence cares, followed their plan of care, however, did not document. This can be considered neglect. Mm -hmm. Yes, it can be. Leaving a resident in the common and or activity area and there to get up and fall with a fracture can be seen as abuse neglect. Mm -hmm. Yes, always supervise them in the common and activity area, especially the second floor. Which of the following is considered verbal abuse? Mm -hmm. Yes. So just remember our purpose for being here, to serve our residents, you know, treat them with kindness, compassion. That's why we're here. You can just sign your name, print, sign, and date. You guys are done. Thank you.